Okay, Queenie. I look like shit. My hair is... And I'm wearing this dumb sissy nightgown. But you need to hear from somebody and you need to listen. I've been going through this since I started on YouTube. It's been a year now, I guess. You're not wrong about any of this. It's the privilege, you know, telling the people that don't have privilege to shut the hell up and not be party poopers and not spoil their fun. It's fun to call people crazy and wing nuts and schizophrenic and uh, bipolar. And sometimes when they say schizophrenic, they don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. They're talking about multiple personality disorder or DID or whatever. They think it's split personalities. That's just a freaking stereotype from from when I was a kid 40 years ago. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. These, you're right. These are supposed to be atheists and they're supposed to be skeptics and they're supposed to be rational. They're supposed to be scientifically based and all this crap. I'm making a roll your own cigarette while I'm talking. Sorry about the air conditioner too, but it's hotter than hell in here. Look, I sent you some links before and I'll try to send them with this video too. You need to know about psych rights. My friend Jim Gottstein, he's a lawyer up in um, Alaska, does a lot of work with people around, uh, particularly over, di over, over prescribing and um, over diagnosing people to sell pills. But he's got a lot of articles on his website, psychrights.org. He's also got a uh, YouTube channel, Jim Gotts. So psychrights.org, if you don't know anything about Mad Cry Girl, I can tell you're just living in isolation and you have not joined the community. If I didn't have Mad Pride community, with all of its flaws, and some of the people are pretty flaky and airy fairy and new agey, and, but with all of its flaws, it sure beats the lack of alternative. You know, I had myself admitted to a mental hospital once because I was suicidal. I didn't learn a fucking thing in that hospital. They had me in classes all day like I was in college or something. You know where I learned shit? Sitting outside on the picnic table outdoors during cigarette breaks from the other women. You need community. Okay, so Mad Pride. Look it up. Mad Pride. Go to mindfreedom.org. Again, a lot of their focus is on, well, the fact that the all these labels and diagnoses and misdiagnoses are stigmatizing people. It's a way of pigeonholing us so they don't have to listen to us. If I can just say, well, you're paranoid, I don't have to listen to another thing you have to say. I've completely invalidated your point of view. So I'm not, I'm, I don't know why this skeptical movement, you know, isn't more interested in what's going on. I think uh, psychiatry and psychology are in large part pseudoscience now. I think they're part of the medical industrial complex. <laughs> and I think they've been co-opted to sell prescription drugs. I can't go into a clinic without them saying, are you depressed or anxious? They do it to every client that walks in. For whatever reason. Well, you know, when you go to a clinic, sometimes you are depressed or anxious because you're not feeling good. What the atheists are doing is no better, no better than when those fundies call off and say, we've got demons. Or if we just worked harder and turned our will and our life over to Jesus Christ, then all these symptoms and stuff would disappear. And no, we're not lazy. You know, we're not malingerers. I work harder than any fucking buddy I know. And we're not making it up and we're not doing it for drama. It's not my fault my mom decided to beat my fucking head to a pulp. I didn't choose this, unless you believe in karma. And I, I had a couple of dykes in Kentucky once I was playing pool with to pull that shit on me. Well, you chose to be born into that family. You fucking kidding me? I saw what went on there with that video you did about the bucolic dance. That was a wonderful, strong, brave video. And they're coming at you. They're using whatever 
they see is a weakness. They dig away at you. Blow them off. Stop answering their freaking comments. Don't. Don't engage them. They'll just make you sicker. When I see somebody say something stupid like that, you know, chase him with a D. He pulled it in his last video. Oswald. The simple-minded character. Okay, first he started out with, I came to the door with a gun. And my parents tried to take it away from me, but when I walked toward them, they, they walked away. So I have a gun. And now, uh, in this last one, when I was going to read some reading the, uh, shout outs, uh, brain damage. That's not what you call it, it's brain injuries. His own daughter has frickin' cancer. I don't know how to break through the wall, girl. I don't know how to break through the wall. I just know we just got to keep repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating until something gets through their thick egos. Because you know what it is. They're covering up for their own selves. That's what this is all about. Because there, but for the grace of whatever, go I. It can happen to me. The invisible disabilities. Deep in their heart of hearts, they're terrified. They might be mentally ill. Every one of them. Every one of them. And in this culture, who isn't a little nuts? The only people who are getting along in this culture, perfectly nor perfectly fine in this culture, are so fucking creeped out, disassociated, dysfunctional, and, and corrupt and ruined by this culture. They're the successes, you know. Like the President of the United States. Who wants to be in a success in a culture that kills children and creates GMO, Monsanto? Who wants to be, if you're a success in this culture, you're a failure, baby. I'm glad you're speaking up. I'm really glad you're speaking up. And I know you're doing it at a great deal of personal cost. Somehow, you've got to construct some protection around you. And that's why I'm telling you, psychrights.org mindfreedom.org and look up the Icarus Project. I think it's the theicarusproject.net. You gotta, you gotta stop this isolation. You, you gotta have family. You gotta have a network. And those people are having fun. Psych rights, mind freedom, Icarus Project, they're having fun. The Icarus Project has just put out a book on mental health in the Occupy movement. Fucking brilliant! All formal, formal mental patients. Jim Gottstein got diagnosed. He was going, I think, with Harvard Law School. He was working his freaking ass off, and he went into a little manic phase where he was up all the time, studying, writing, studying, writing, studying, writing, not sleeping. He put his ass in a mental hospital. And I'll tell you what, when he got in there, they didn't believe he was a law student at Harvard. I have another friend had a stroke. Put her in the hospital. They didn't believe she was the general manager of one of the largest community radio stations in California. One of the biggest markets. Most listeners. Millions of people listen to that station. My landlady decided to perform an illegal eviction, uh, uh, excuse me, perform an illegal eviction on me because I was inconvenient and her little sunny boy wanted to move in and he didn't like me. Yeah, she did it. She called police and just got and told them that I was attempting suicide. I got woken up in the middle of the night by the sheriff's department. They hauled my ass all the way to Albuquerque, 75 miles away, wearing nothing but a skinny little cotton house dress. No underwear, no money, nothing. And I had to figure out how to get back the next morning. Finally, the hospital paid for a cab ride 75 miles back here. How did she get away with that? I, I'm out about having brain injuries. Because I don't want the stereotyping and the stigmatization. And somebody's got to speak up. And I don't have a hell of a lot to lose. On the ambulance ride in, guy's asking me questions. He asked me my occupation. I said, I'm an independent radio producer. Hear what he wrote down? That I'm delusional. I'm an independent radio producer, Queenie. And then we've got these freaking atheists throwing out these words like they would never use a racial stereotype or epithet. 
you won't hear him swinging around the N word. You know, you got to get some protection around you. You have to take care of yourself. I don't know how. I'll support you any way I can. But you have to have some protection around you, and you really need to go to those websites and research that shit and absorb it and internalize it and start working it. It's not a cult or anything like that. It's just self-care, how to manage your own stuff. It also looks at mental health issues as, instead of mental illness, like, literally, like, mad pride. Like, there's some really creative stuff about being able to think and experience and be in a reality outside the box. We have a hell of a lot to offer. There's some genius to the madness. I'm not going to get into that whole stuff about all crazy people are poets and, you know, angels. And I'm not going to get into that. That's, you know, noble savage talk. But we have a lot to offer. You know that Nash guy? The beautiful mind? You know the part of the story Ron Howard didn't show? He cured his schizophrenia without medication. Neuroleptics and psychotropics, these modern ones, reduce the average lifespan of the people on them by 25 years. With the invention of Thorazine and Haldol, our life expectancy went down only 10 years. We lived 10 years shorter than the general population. Now it's 25 years with neuroleptics and um, psychotropics. Before we were medicated, our lifespan was the same as Gen Pop. Now we're getting diabetes, obesity, liver and kidney failure, all from the drugs, suicidal ideations, from the drugs. I'm not saying go off your medicine. I'm saying as faulty as the system is, as faulty as the network is, we have to help each other. They're not going to listen to us. They're not going to respect us. They're not going to hear us. When I was a psychiatric nursing assistant in a lockdown facility, we were trained that if, um, I'm going to call him a client, was agitated, we should calmly repeat our message. You're not seeing the Virgin Mary. You're going to be okay. You're not seeing Satan. You're going to be okay. Whatever it was, you're going to be okay. Just keep repeating it. Keep repeating it. Very calmly. So that you don't escalate them. Well, I think the same applies with us uh, teaching them that... Uh, we have rights as, as people with behavioral health conditions. I think we have to keep speaking calmly and repeating and calmly and repeating over and over. And I think when we need to scream and cry, see the problem with screaming and crying is they see it as a symptom. It's not fair. I have to be more in control of my emotions than anybody around me. People scream at us and threaten me. I see it around me all the time, the way women treat their kids in the grocery store. I see mental unbalance around me all the time. But when those sheriffs came to my door, girl, I was tight. I was just what they wanted to see. I presented as a lady, even in that funky old nightgown. I didn't give many excuses. I tore them up. No, it's not fair. That's why we need each other, you see. Because you can't scream and cry in front of them. They'll just say, see? She's crazy. You don't have to listen to her. And will start laughing at you and shit. You need to scream and cry with us. See, we know you. We are you. And we can support you in supporting yourself. We can do this. We can empower each other. 
those people just suck your energy out. The doctors with their prejudices that they call diagnoses. The liberals with their, okay, you can be one of us, but be grateful. And don't ever, ever challenge us or tell us we're making you uncomfortable. Sound familiar? Don't inconvenience us. We run the show here. We're allowing you to be here so that we can show how big-hearted and generous we are to ourselves. Not about you. You're the token crazy. You're the pet. Oh, I rolled my cigarette wrong. Don't lose it over this. They're not worth it. There's a whole big world of crazy people out here, mad people. And, you know, there's a Mad Pride radio show. There's Robert Whitaker. I, I sent you the videotape, Mad in America. He has a blog. He's on uh, Facebook. You can read his columns all the time. You need to stop feeling so isolated and like you're the only voice in the wilderness screaming for justice because you're not. You're not. And you don't need to burn out. But you don't need to defend yourself against bigots. You know, there's some stuff about uh, Frederick Douglass, I think, was the one who said that power doesn't give itself up just because you beg for it. See, the problem is you pass. You're smart, talented, articulate, rational, mostly, woman who uh, makes a regular and vital contribution to the YouTube community. So people just take for granted that you're always going to be that person and that you're never going to have an issue or an obstacle or a situation It's always the strong ones, like us, that have to take the most burden. I resent having to educate their asses. They've got internets. They've got college degrees. I don't have no college degree. What am I doing all the research for? Prove it. Prove it. I send them to websites. They say, you didn't, you didn't cite anything in a comment on YouTube. I can't put a URL in there. I sent you to site rights. I sent you... And you didn't even bother to look. You just come back with a comment telling me that I'm paranoid. You didn't even bother to look at the links I gave you. Come on, man. Straight away with a comment. You're absolutely right. And we need to inject this into the atheist community. We do. It's just like any other disability, man. And yeah, that's another thing. There's this chick. Uh... The fear of blandness, whatever, Australian chicken wheelchair. People think I'm going to be drooling, like I'm brain damaged. And I sent her a comment and I said, wait a minute, so you are separating yourself from those of us who don't have visible disabilities. You don't want to be associated with us. We have disabilities too. Never heard an answer back. Drooling. A woman with disabilities who's an atheist. Yeah, some of us drool. You know what? Some of the normies drool too. Temporarily able minded. They drool. Probably more than we do. And they're more violent than we are. I mean, hell, how many people has Obama killed since he's been in office? Bush before that? Those are the normies. Those are the temporarily able-minded people. Don't lose it over this. Too valuable. Too important. I get too much um, morale from you. Get some morale from me. Hang on. Now, the thing about chronicity, chronic, is it means lifelong or long-term. 
And who wants to be saddled with one of these negative labels hanging around your neck like an albatross as long as you live? I don't need it. If you need it, you can have it. But I don't think anybody really needs it. So we'll just take it, and we'll tear it off, and we'll put it in our trash can over here. Anti-psychiatry. Finally, we come up with the label that I've given to myself and the number numero uno for right fine fellow. Well, I think that one's okay. I think I'll keep it. Nothing wrong with this. I don't want to dispense with it, so I'll hang on to it for a while. 